If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. We have two identical traveling waves and they are moving in the same direction. And importantly, they are out of phase by pi over two radians. We need to figure out the amplitude of the resultant wave in terms of y sub m, which is the common amplitude of the two combining waves. And to do that, we're going to use what's called the principle of superposition which is represented by this equation here. But basically what it says is that when the two waves overlap, we can find their algebraic sum to create the resultant wave. So what we're gonna do is add the equation of wave one to the equation of wave two. We just need to establish those two equations first. Now for wave one, we can write the following equation. And this is just the basic equation of a wave traveling along. And for wave two, since it is said to be out of phase by pi over two radians, we're basically going to write the exact same equation, except we're going to include an extra phase constant inside the parentheses. Since it's out of phase by pi over two radians, all we need to do is add pi over two inside the argument of the sine function there. So that would represent a wave that is out of phase by pi over two radians relative to the first wave. Now, the principle of superposition tells us that to get the resultant wave, all we need to do is add these two together. So we're going to add y1, which is this equation, to y2, which is this equation. So let's write that out. So there are the two wave equations added together. And what we wanna do is actually simplify this equation. Now that looks like a pretty daunting task, but we're gonna be able to simplify this by taking advantage of the following trigonometric identity. Now this identity might be given to you on a reference sheet during your exam because it is, again, a little bit daunting, but what it tells us is that we can take the sine of an angle alpha and add that to the sine of a different angle beta and then come up with this rather complex looking argument here. So we're going to be doing that in just a moment, but perhaps before we even do that, we might notice that in simplifying this equation, we have a common factor of y sub m. So what we're going to do is factor that out. So we have gone ahead and factored out the y sub m, leaving us with the sum of these two sine functions. Now, again, we're going to be using this identity. And so in order to use this identity, this term right here would serve as our alpha. So that's going to be alpha throughout this equation. And then the other term right here is going to serve as our beta. So we'll kind of color them in two different colors so we can follow this along. So we're now going to employ the identity. And so for the first part of the identity, we're going to have two sine of one half of the sum of alpha and beta. So let's go ahead and set that up. We would have two sine of one half and then a parentheses, and then we're gonna add the alpha, so that was kx minus omega t, and then we're gonna add that to the beta, so that's kx minus omega t plus pi over two. Now, of course, in a moment, we're gonna simplify that, but then we look on in the identity, and we have to multiply by the cosine of one half of the difference between alpha and beta. So this is gonna get rather lengthy. Let's kind of shrink that down. So again, we're gonna to have to multiply that by the cosine of one half. And now we're gonna do the difference. Let's do this carefully. So we're gonna have kx minus omega t. Now we're gonna be subtracting beta, but when you subtract beta, you're gonna to have to distribute the minus sign. So just do that very carefully. We're gonna have minus kx and again, I think we're gonna to need to shrink this down because we're running out of room here. So minus kx, distribute the negative sign, so that becomes plus omega t, and then minus pi over two, just like that. So that was a little bit small. Hopefully you can still see that on the screen. Now we're gonna clean this up a little bit. If we look carefully, this kx minus kx cancel, and this negative omega t plus omega t, that also cancels, so we can rewrite. Let's take a look inside the parentheses over here. We have kx plus kx, that'll give us a two kx. And then we have a negative omega t and a negative omega t that's gonna give us a negative two omega t. Now we can clean this up further. What we're gonna do is we're gonna distribute this one half into the parentheses. And in addition, we can actually factor this two out in front. So we'll do a couple of moves at once here. This gives us the following equation. We're gonna put that two in the front, so we have two y sub m. And then after distributing that one half, we're gonna have the sine of just kx minus omega t 
and then plus pi over 4. Okay, we're getting somewhere here. Now we're trying to figure out what the amplitude of the resultant wave is. And we can see that we have the sine function here describing the motion of the wave. As far as the amplitude is concerned, the amplitude would be this factor on the outside of sine multiplied by that factor, which is also on the outside of sine. So in other words, we're going to actually take those two factors, the 2 y sub m times the cosine. We can actually simplify that too, can't we? If we multiply 1 half by negative pi over 2, we're going to get negative pi over 4. And then we have the sine function. Now, again, in the wave equation, the sine term represents the behavior of the wave as a function of time and as also as a function of x. But importantly, the coefficient of the sine function, that's actually the amplitude. So that's what we're going to actually want to evaluate in order to answer this question. And what we'll do is uh, calculate the cosine of negative pi over 4. Now, the cosine of negative pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So we're going to have 2y sub m multiplied by root 2 over 2. But if you multiply the 2 by root 2 over 2, then the 2's cancel, and we actually get the square root of 2. And then that's multiplied by y sub m. And capping off the question, we know it's asking us for the amplitude, so that is the amplitude right there. We could say that the amplitude is the square root of 2 multiplied by y sub m. We can also simplify the square root of 2, which is approximately... 1.41 so you could also answer it as 1.41 times y sub n that is the correct answer for the amplitude of this resultant wave